Hey, thank you for joining us today at Pantry Pratis. We're in the kitchen. We're taking you with us. We're making this beautiful dish, grilled chicken, grilled portobello, marinated mushrooms, and grilled asparagus with sautéed onions on the side. Guaranteed a winner if you're having friends over. Okay, first step I'm going to do is cut out the stems and any other dangly bits you have here. I'm going to save these. Don't, don't get rid of those. Any dangly bits you want to take off, go ahead. And I'll set them aside with the next one. Okay, there we go. With that now, I'll cut up some onion. I'm not going to get real particular with it. Um, I am going to take off the outer skin, like so. Whatever method works best for you. Now, I'm going to compost all this. Now, why would you compost? Well. Because I'm interested in, in uh, topsoil, I want to garden next year and the year after that. So I'm going to recycle the best of the nutrients that other other food producers have exported in the form of these vegetables, and I don't want to waste anything. So I'm going to take that, and make that into topsoil. Just takes a little time, carbon and nitrogen, and you'll be good to go. All right. So for this particular part, I'm going to look to have these in yeah, about yay thick right on top of the mushrooms so when we grill them they all come out with that beautiful onion flavor I like my thumb so I keep it out of the way Of course, having sharp knives also helps. Okay, so these stems and these onions, I'm going to set aside for right now. Okay, so I happen to be staying at a friend's house. I don't have a garlic press, so I'm going to show you a little trick that I use. I just take my fresh garlic, put it in a bowl, and have a sturdy fork. You don't want any kind of wimpy, wimpy fork. And I'm just going to take that fork, grab a hold of the front of it, and just push down, and it will crush that garlic just fine. That I'm going to take and just going to put one on each um, portobello mushroom. Okay, now I'm going to use olive oil. Always olive oil. Avoid the seed oils as much as you possibly can. They're really not good for us. Heavily processed. So I'm not really measuring all that precisely here. I'm just looking just to get all the gills wet and let that flavor just soak in there. A little balsamic vinegar. Now I know that you can't smell this, but boy, this is really coming together well. And just because I'm such a big fan of garlic, I'm going to put a little garlic salt. Mostly for the salt flavor, but a little extra garlic won't hurt. Let that sit for half hour, 45 minutes. Okay, so now in my big pan, I'm going to go ahead and add a little more olive oil. Two tastes. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, just uh, whole cloves of garlic in here. And our uh, stems and our onions that we cut up before, I'm just going to add those straight on in there. Okay, so I've got the grill getting warm, set to about 350. I'm going to go ahead and put some oil on it, not just, uh, just to kind of keep everything from sticking. We're going to be cooking all of our items here on the grill so I want everything to uh, release when I do so. Now for spices I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to use one of my old favorites, Chef Paul's Magic Seasoning. I went in and reconfigured to see if I can get that last one on there. And here we go. Okay, so all the chicken is on there, and the sizzle, all right. Okay, so while the chicken is over there sizzling, I hope you can hear it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the onions and the mushrooms on to uh, medium medium to low heat right there. I'm not really looking to push any any part of this meal, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to rush it, uh, because the mushrooms, they're, they're going to soak for a while. Uh, I've got everything in here, it's cooking down nice, the last of the big chunks of onions broke up. Let me turn down the heat. 
And I'm just going to let this uh, get a real slow simmer. Um, chicken probably has another half an hour or so. And we'll just let that cook. Okay, the chicken's still going. Probably has a couple more minutes left. These look like they're just about perfect. I'm going to push this back to the stove. Now, when I serve these, I'm going to go ahead and drain them. I'm not using a uh, slotted spoon at the moment, but I will when, I, when I'm serving them. So all that extra uh, liquids in the bottom there, I'll just save that for a soup or something like that. Again, not trying to waste anything. So, we'll call that done. Turn off the heat. And push it back to the stove so it can stay warm. Okay, chicken's probably done. We'll go ahead and check it here. Cut into this fatty. Nice crust, all white all the way through. Okay, set those aside and get the, get the mushrooms on there. Okay, honestly, this is the part I've been waiting for. So, these have been sitting for about 45 minutes or an hour. I really wasn't paying much attention. About 10 minutes ought to, ought to do these nicely. Okay, so the mushrooms, you can hear them sizzle. They're back there finishing up. I'm going to do two of my other favorite grilled vegetables, which are tomatoes. Cut them fairly thick. About like so. There's two. Now my favorite vegetable on the grill, asparagus. Now I'm just going to look to where it feels woody, and when it where it breaks, that goes into the compost bin. Okay, mushrooms are about done. Oh, and do they look good? Nice and tender, not too overdone. Okay, so while the grill's still hot, I'll go ahead and put my asparagus on there. Asparagus won't take very long to cook. And then last I'll do the tomatoes for the garnish. Okay, asparagus looks done. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and put the tomatoes on. Uh, they don't need very long at all, but boy do they taste good when they're all grilled. I'd say about three minutes. Turn off the heat. There we go.